Hey everybody, Dave Thomas here, and today I am building Rocketarium Sandhawk model rocket. This is a scale model of a U.S. sounding rocket. This is a mid-power rocket, and as those go, this is relatively simple and straightforward to put together. As with any rocket kit, it's a good idea to check all the contents before starting the build. And the parts list here is on the second to last page of the instructions. So first of all, the decals here, um, these were folded into the instructions. So if you can't find these right away, um, check inside the folds of the instructions. Okay, we have basswood fins or basswood fins. Okay. Um, this is one part of the motor mount assembly, and this comes in two pieces. So this is one, and then this package here is the other part of the motor mount. Um, we have an ejection baffle kit, and this is pretty common to all of the Rocketarium kits. All right. This is the antenna assembly here, and it's kind of packed up in its own little cylinder for protection. Um, we do get a little rod here. This is for um, applying glue up inside the body tubes. And speaking of body tubes, there are a total of three. So we have one long one and then several short ones here. I'll just set those aside, make sure there's nothing else in them. Okay, we have a parachute and then a uh, package of small parts. These are detail parts, the launch lug and the shock cord, and then finally a nose cone. Now one last part kind of eluded me here. Um, it says there is a basswood fin ring. And as far as I can tell, that is this ring that's included here with the antenna assembly. Um, but there are not four of them, there are one of them, and I think that's what it's supposed to be. Uh, because this is going to go inside the fin assembly between the body tube and the uh, fins themselves. So I think we're okay here. It looks like we have everything. And I'm going to put this back away and we will get started. Now normally, I would tell people at this point always to read through the instructions thoroughly before you start building, and then build this in order. Uh, I am going to make one exception to that though, and that's going to be with the fins. Uh, these are basswood fins, and they have a much tighter grain than the uh, balsa wood that we often see in model rockets does. And so you may not need to use a lot of sanding sealer on here. Okay. Um, often with, with basswood, I will just sand the fins, and then the, the primer that I put on it will fill in uh, any grain that's remaining. It may mean you need a, an additional coat or two of primer, um, but that's up to you. If you are going to sanding seal the fins, what I would recommend is go ahead and go forward here to step six. <clears throat> okay, which it describes the sanding of the fins. Okay, and so uh, here you would run a line. In fact, I can show you this here. Um, it's three quarters of an inch, which is basically about where that notch is. Okay, and then we're going to bring that back along the leading edge. So I'm going to make my measurement here, and indeed that is three quarters of an inch. And so it's going to go from here, okay, down to the very vertex of that first fin angle. OK, 
Okay, and then what you would do is sand this um, at an angle so that you have a, a wedge shaped or a knife shaped uh, profile there. And then go ahead and add your sanding sealer, sand the fins, and then go back um, and put them on. Okay, so if you're going to add, basically if you're going to add sanding sealer to these, go ahead and start doing that process now so that they have time to dry while you're doing the rest of the rocket. Okay, otherwise though, we're going to go back here to the motor assembly. For that, we're going to need these two parts bags. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we have this little piece here. So this is a short body tube. Okay, and in it are two couplers. You want to take those out. Okay, and this is what is going to be the metal shroud on the finished rocket, and so that's what they refer to refer this as. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is put a mark on one of the couplers at a quarter inch or six millimeters from one end, it doesn't matter which. Okay, now, this is going to fit in here. I haven't put any glue in yet. All right, we will here in a moment. Okay, so that's gonna go up to there. And then, the other coupler will go in the other, oops, other side. Okay, so we want to keep that where it was there at that point. Okay, so now take that back out. Now I'm going to take this two and a half inch tube, the metal shroud, and I'm going to put a bead of glue just inside the tube. And now the marked coupler, I'm going to insert this until I get to that mark there. Okay, so right like that. Okay, and it's still wet over here. I'm just going to use that glue because we need to put glue on the other end. There's no need wasting it. Add that there. Okay, and now this goes in this side. So the other coupler will go in. And it's going to go right up against the interior of the other one. Okay, and I'm just going to take my finger and smooth that out. So that now, let's see if we can get this in focus. Okay, so it should look like that. And then I'm going to make sure that my mark here is still where it belongs. Okay, I'm going to let that dry for just a moment. Now while that part of the motor mount is drying, the interior parts are in this other little bag, and it comes with its own instructions as well. So we'll just pop those out here. Okay, so we should have two centering rings there, a retaining ring, and an engine block ring. And then the rest may be up inside of here. So those are a retainer clip. This is a spacer. And then this is a, a motor spacer. This is used during the launch if you are using a um, 
black powder C or D motor. Uh, it's going to be shorter than the, the E size motors that would normally go in here. So you'd have to put in this little spacer and then your C or D motor. Okay, so the first thing we do is make a slit at three and three quarters inches from the aft end of the tube. Okay, now I'm going to do this before I put the um, thrust ring in because I find it's a little bit easier to do it that way. So here I'm going to go ahead and mark this at three and three quarters. It's going to be right there. So this will become the forward end. So I'm just going to write down on here so I know which is which. Okay, and then I'm going to cut a three millimeter or an eighth of an inch slit at that mark. That is where this engine clip will go in, just like that. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead and just pull that out once more here. Okay, and then I'm going to take my glue, takes my glue, take my glue, right, and I'm going to Put a bead of glue right before where that little cut was. Just go all the way around there. Okay, and you can smear it upward like I've got it there. You just don't want it down too far into the tube. But by doing it this way, um, as you'll see, I don't have to worry about trying to cut at just the right spot. Um, because now I'm going to take this thrust ring, stick it in the aft end, and that's what this yellow tube is for. It's going to push it all the way up. And now if I put my clip back in, it's going to act as a stop for that engine block. All right, so now I'm going to push this all the way up. Okay, and that's going to make this flush here. All right, now keep in mind, this yellow guy is not as long as an E engine is. Um, it's meant to go in flush there. And so if I had put this flush all the way in and done that first, this would actually have been up a little bit too far. And when I measured to make my cut, I would have to wiggle around a bit more to get it exactly where it is. So if I do this first, and put that clip in first, that gives me more of a guide. Okay, you can do it either way. And if you look at some of my other Rocketarium videos, I've done it just the way they show in the instructions there. Okay, so either way is fine, just make sure you got that glued in well. Just gonna set that down for a moment. Okay, now the next thing we're going to do is put the locking ring. Okay, and this is what's going to keep the rest of that from flopping around. Oh, one thing to be oh no 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 no. Okay, one thing to be careful is make sure you withdraw this right away. Uh, otherwise, if you had a little bit of excess glue down in there, you would have glued that in. Basically, you have to rebuild the engine mount at that point. Okay, so this next part I'm going to dry fit first. So we're going to measure an inch from the aft end of the tube here. I'm just going to make a little mark. Okay, and that is where the aft side of this is going to go. So this is going to go on here and then we'll be in that position and that keeps this from flopping around. Okay, and then you have one ring that's got a small notch in it. That's going to go up here on the forward end. And that notch will go just over the beginning 
of the clip right there. The one with the larger notch is going to go on the aft end. Okay, and that will go on at a quarter inch. So I'll go ahead and mark that one too. Okay, or about six millimeters for the metrically inclined there. Okay, and now we can just apply glue to everything. So I'm going to start with running some glue on the forward end of this ring here. And I've brought the ring down a little bit so that I can push it forward into the glue. Okay, I'm just going to spread that a little bit with my finger there. And then push that back up until it's just right at the end of the engine clip there. And then you want to get everything so the edges are all parallel there. And if you have excess glue, I can be a little bit here, um, you can put a fillet on the inner edge here as well. I'm going to wait and do that after my initial glue dries so I don't have as much danger of pushing that around and dislodging it from where it needs to be. Okay, now for the gray one here, it's um, you could either start here and push it over or start here. I'm going to start here because that way I'm pushing to the line and not covering the line with glue as much. So it's going to, something's going to happen either way. Okay, now this part really isn't structural. It's not going to receive a lot of stress. Um, so it's less important that I get a good fillet on it. Okay, so I'm just going to bring it up to there. The only stress it's going to receive is from bending of the uh, engine clip there. And then for the aft ring, I'm going to do that about the same here. So get rid of some of the excess glue on my finger. And then apply some glue. here. This one is going to take a lot of stress, so make sure it's glued well. All right, and I'll push that one to my quarter inch mark there. All right, and then smooth out the excess, making a nice fillet there again. Um, and now at this point I'm going to let this whole thing dry and when I come back, I'll put fillets around the inner edges there as well. Now, while I'm waiting for all of my engine pieces to dry, I can go ahead and go on to the baffle assembly. Um, this is a completely independent package as well. And so when I come back here, we will do that. So very quickly here, we'll just open this up. And they're pretty basic, and they come with their own instructions. All right, so we should have a coupler and then two baffle plates. And whichever design you get, the idea here is that the holes in the baffle are offset, either this way where you have some in the center and some around the circumference, or in some cases it may be half on one side and half on the other. They all work in the same way in that they prevent the direct flow of hot gases from the ejection charge to the parachute and instead make those gases bounce around and become turbulent in here, giving them time to cool off before reaching the parachute. So we will start by putting this screw eye into the forward baffle plate here and it has a little hole just for doing this. And here I'm going to use just a little bit of wood glue. Um, white glue will also work here. Wood glue is a little bit stronger and it also dries faster. 
And so I'm just going to put a little dollop right on that hole. And now I'm going to screw down the screw eye. Just until I can't see that top thread anymore. I don't want to go past it. I don't want the blank shank here down in the wood. Okay, and then on the back side, it's pushed some of the glue through. And I'm just going to add a little bit more to that. And that'll just give us a really good, strong anchor here. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. And while that is drying, I'm going to put a bead of glue here around the inside edge of one end of the coupler, doesn't matter which. Okay, I'm going to smooth that around with my finger. If you get any on the outside, like that there, just go ahead and, and wipe that off. Because we don't want to increase the circumference of the uh, coupler. All right, then we're going to take our other baffle plate and just push that into the glue. All right, and I want to put that in so there's just a little bit of a lip of the coupler above the plate there. Okay. All right, and now I'm going to let both of those pieces uh, just set still and dry for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll come back to put everything back together. My glue has pretty much completely dried on both sections now. And so now I'm going to put another bead of glue in it here. Like that. And I'm going to spread this a bit thinner, uh, but also a bit wider than I did the previous one. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to put this in edgewise and then flip it up like that, and then I'm going to pull it forward a bit and give it just a little bit of a twist. Okay, and then for the most part, doing this pulls the glue into the, the spaces here and forms a little fillet. There's a little blank space here, and I'm just going to take this excess glue on my finger here and just put that right along the edge. Now I'm going to turn it back over to the other side and I'm just going to put a small fillet of glue in here uh, because this will have to take the force of the ejection charge on it. So you do want it well reinforced. And again, I'm just going to take a finger here and smear that around. Okay, let's see if we can get a close up here. All right, so this will form a fillet fill in there, and on this side, the, simply pulling the um, plate forward help form a fillet around here. Now this just needs to dry for about half an hour, and then it will be ready to go into your model rocket. The glue has dried on these parts, and now I just need to include an interior fillet on this thrust string and on the forward thrust ring. So here we'll just use a little bit of glue. All right, and I'm just going to smear that around with a finger. And the excess I can put on the next one here. Yeah, all 
right, and that should do just nicely. I'll set that aside to dry once more. Now our next step is going to be inserting the uh, interior part of the motor mount into the exterior part. I'm going to wait on that for just a few minutes while my uh, fillets dry there. So the next thing I'm going to do is step up to marking the airframe. We have a marking guide here and just make sure, yep, there's nothing on the back of that. So I'm just going to cut this out quickly and then we'll be able to mark the body too. Okay, so we need the main body tube, the longest one, and I'm going to have just a little piece of tape ready here. Alright, and then I'm just going to wrap this around and line up the alignment marks there. Okay, and the other thing I'm going to do is extend that tape up so at least a little bit of it adheres to the body tube and this will keep the uh, guide from slipping. All right, and I just need to go around and mark each one. Just remove this once more. Okay, and now we're going to extend these lines upward. Okay, um, so the fin lines you want these to be as long as the fins. Now the fins are actually going to be set back a little bit, but if you make them the the length of the fins right now, then you'll have um, some guideline to work with up here so that you'll still be able to line your fins better. And then the launch lug line here should extend all the way up. Now you can use a door frame for this, you can use a, a piece of angled metal, or you can use this actual uh, fin guide that Estes makes. Okay. In all cases, we're doing pretty much the same thing. This is just giving us a straight edge that we can align with the tube. All right, and so I'm just going to mark the, the fin lines here. I'm going to go up about oh, a third to halfway up the tube. launch lug line here will extend the entire length. Now we're ready to put the uh, interior of the engine mount into the rear coupling housing here, the, what they're calling the metallic shroud housing. Uh, this back here will be the aft end and so this is going to fit inside. I'm dry fitting it right now and here I'm feeling a little resistance and that's because there's some glue um, left from when we did the coupling in there. Now if I just give it a little bit of a twist it goes right in uh, but if you've got more buildup of glue in there then you may want to take um, a little bit of sandpaper and just smooth out the any glue ring that you've got inside of there. Okay, so, you 
Okay, when it's completely in, the forward end of the engine tube um, will be flush with the coupler there, and the rear centering ring will be flush with the aft coupler, and we'll have this sticking out a little bit. Okay, so we're going to glue this in two stages. At the forward end, we want to put a bead of glue uh, about two centimeters in from the forward end. Okay, because when this is inserted, then this ring will push up against that glue. And then I'm going to insert this about that far. And then you can take an applicator, um, either the little balsa wood stick that came with this, or if you've got other ones, um, I use these elongated uh, cotton applicators here. But I'm going to use that to put a ring of glue right here on the inside of this couplet. Now this can go right at the edge, because this is what's going to hold the aft ring there, and it will be flush with this coupler. So you don't want to put this in too far. All right. If you do like I did and get a little glue on the tube there, it's not going to hurt anything. Okay, so now I'm going to slide this in. Okay, and I'm just going to turn this up on its end and press down. Okay, and I'm going to use my coupler here, or my, not my coupler, but my applicator, to just fill in any cracks that we've got there. Um, but be careful not to leave any glue on the outer edge of that coupler. here, run that around, and then wipe off anything that got on to the coupler. Okay, and then up at the forward end, the engine ring there has done a nice job of pushing the glue forward that's going to form its own fillet there. And so, once again, I'm going to set this aside and let it dry once more. For the next step, you're going to need this wood ring that came housed with the antenna assembly here. And so I'm just going to cut this masking tape, gently peel that away. Okay, and this wood ring is rather thin and fragile, so handle it carefully. And I'm just going to set the antenna assembly aside. Okay, and now what we need to do is mark two inches from the aft end of the main body tube here. And I'm going to do it along the launch lug line just as a point of reference. So that's going to go right there. And then this ring slides onto the body tube. Now at this point we're not going to glue anything yet. Um, we just need to have this in place before we put the um, motor mount inside. Okay, and now I'm going to take my motor mount assembly here. And once again we need an applicator to put some glue up inside the body tube. Okay, and this doesn't have to be at any particular spot. Uh, I'm going to do it just inside here so that the glue gets pushed up further inside. So I'll put a ring here just, just inside the edge and then I'll go ahead and smear some a little bit farther up so we get a good contact here. Um, and then what we want to do is very quickly 
um, we're going to slide this into place and turn it. And the only thing you want to keep in mind is where do you want your engine clip in relation to the fins and the launch lug and such. I like to have mine um, on the same side as the launch lug. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to push that in, give it a twist back and forth, and then move it to where my clip is now in line with the launch lug line. And once again, I'll set this aside to dry. Now I talked about the fins earlier, and at this point, um, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and mark the fins for sanding. And so I did it once on, on this fin. On one side, I'm going to do the other side here now. Okay, and again, this is going to be three-quarters of an inch down on the leading edge, which puts it right at that um, indentation. And then that goes all the way down to the corner on the leading edge there. Like that. So you should have this on both sides. Okay, and then we will sand a knife edge into this down to the point of the line here. So um, you'll have much more taper going on from this point forward than you do down in here. Okay, so I'm going to mark these other ones off camera and then we'll come back and sand them. Once you have all of the fins marked, then we'll want to start sanding these down to a knife edge. Now, if you don't want to do the knife edge fins here um, and make this more of a sports scale model, then simply round the, the edges here on the leading edge to make it a bit more streamlined. And this does have the advantage of giving it a little bit more strength, although with the uh, basswood here, um, it's much stronger than balsa, and so it's less of an issue. Now, I recommend using a sanding block or a sanding tee, something that has a hard, flat surface on it. That's going to make the, uh, the edge easier to put on without accidentally rounding it over there. And I'm going to start from this edge and, and work my way back because this is going to require the most sanding. Once we get up into here, very little sanding will need to be done. Okay, so just start up here. And you can just start, okay, and so as you see, um, there's more wood being removed here than there is back here as we reach the end of the fin, and that's what we want, okay. And do this um, on both sides, flipping it over every so often so that you don't end up over sanding one side and having a, a lopsided uh, contour to it. Okay. I'm using 100 grit sandpaper here. Um, I would actually prefer to use 80, but I don't have any handy at the moment. But a medium grit sandpaper is probably fine. Uh, alternatively, you could potentially use a rotary tool, like a Dremel tool or something like that. Um, or you could also try a power sander um, I would be careful with both of those. Uh, try it first on some scrap wood of about the same hardness so you'll have an idea of how quickly that wood is going to be removed. And then um, don't go all the way to the finished product using a power tool of any kind. Um, get it close to where you want it and then use your hand sanding to finish that off. And again, it's um, with power tools it's really easy to go too far and end up sanding off too much. So if you go not quite far enough, then you can use the hand tool here to give the, the fine details on the, the, edge of the, uh, the end of your sanding of the edge. And then once you've got that done, um, go up to a finer sandpaper and then sand all the faces here. Okay, you really don't need to sand the edges other than the leading edge. You might want to give it just a few strokes of the sandpaper to remove the uh, little bit of charring here from the laser cutter. 
Now, on the root edge, don't mess with this. Um, if you look, it's actually got several indentations here. So the, the notch here is going to go around the fin ring that we installed earlier. Um, and there's also a little bevel here. And that, that's not a mistake. That's actually in there because that is going to fit over this point here. So the, the engine mount assembly here is actually a slightly larger diameter than the body tube itself. And so when we put this all together, all right, that little bevel is going to line up with that little notch here and then the ring will go under the forward notch. So it's best not to do anything really to this root edge lest you might remove that little bell there. We need that. Okay. So I'm going to take my fins off camera and do all the sanding and then we'll come back and glue them onto the rocket. I have my fins shaped now so the uh, airfoil has been sanded into them and I'm going to use the same medium grit sandpaper here to sand the entire uh, side of each fin. Alright, so that makes that smoother. Um, I'll do this with the rest of the fins off camera and then I'll follow up the 100 grit with uh, 120 or 150 grit to give a smoother finish and that should be enough then that when we put the primer on uh, we'll get a nice smooth finish on the fins. If you want to you can take the sanding even further going up to a 220 grit and get a really really fine sanding job done. Uh, but Eventually you reach diminishing returns there for a lot more work um, for not a whole lot of change in the surface. I finished sanding my fins and there's a little bit of sawdust here left. Um, something that you might notice here is that on the sanded edge where we put the airfoil in there are little fuzzes there. Let's see if I can get this close enough so you can see that. Uh, but it looks kind of fuzzy along the edges here, and that's just where the wood fibers have been uh, brought up to the surface here by the sanding. And what happens is you can sand these off and you'll get new ones. So there are a couple of ways we can handle this. One is to use um, a polyurethane based sanding sealer over this, which will lock that down and then you can re-sand it. Uh, in most cases though, the primer that you apply to this before painting will also lock those fibers and then you can just come in with a little bit of sandpaper and touch up the edge there. Okay, um, And that also brings us to another point in the instructions one of the options is to prime the fins before mounting them. Okay, Now there are pros and cons to this um, on the pro side, this allows you to completely finish this fin without having the body tube in the way and having to sand around corners and such. On the con side though, you have to be really careful about not getting any primer on the root edge. And I would suggest if you're going to prime this off of the rocket, is um, mask this so that about an eighth to a quarter of an inch along the root edge up the side is also unprimed because this is where your glue fillets are going to go and they're going to adhere better to bare wood than they will the primed wood. For this construction video I'm going to prime and paint the fins after they've been attached to the rocket. So our next task here is to simply line up the fins Okay, remember we're lining up two points. There's this little notch here that goes up against the um, motor mount tube there. And then we also have this ring that is going to go under that main notch there. Okay, now originally, see there, there's my original mark when we put this on. And if I leave that right there, 
they still line up okay so this is what you're going to want to check here is go all the way through actually that was a launch lug line let's put this on a fin line put it on a fin line all right still lines up there okay and you're going to want to go around here with each fin and do the same thing and they should all come out pretty close these are all precision laser cut there shouldn't be a lot of variability in them um, but just to make sure go through and check each one and as you do it should bring this uh, wood ring down into a parallel position so if you had it kind of canted off one side or another um, this should fix it okay so here now I'm going to give myself some new markings. I'm going to do it on the top side of the ring this time. I'm just going to go whoops, all the way around and mark where that is. And this is mainly so I know where to sand and where to glue. The next thing we're going to do is take a small piece of sandpaper and roughen up the area where the fins are going to go. Okay, and I would recommend um, fine sandpaper for this. So I've got 120 grit here, it'll work. Anything between about 80 and 150 is fine. And all we're going to do is just remove the shiny glassine finish from the tubes here. All right. And so it's just this does not require a lot. Okay. Now you don't have markings down here. You can pencil in some markings down here on the the engine mount outer tube if you want. Um, for the most part, we can kind of gauge where they're going to go. And this will simply allow the glue to adhere better. Okay, and you don't need to do it really deep. Um, otherwise, you'll have to go through and redraw your lines too. Okay, and then the launch lug, um, it's going to be up in this region so if we have the, the ring in place uh, basically the launch lug is going to go between the engine mount tube and the ring there so I don't need to go all the way down okay and then the forward launch lug is going to be 11 inches from the aft of the total body tube there Let's get a bigger ruler. Okay, so this is going to go find my launch lug line. There we go. Okay, so 11 inches would be right here. And then I'll just sand a little bit beyond that for the forward launch lug. At this point, gluing on the fins is pretty much like gluing on any other model rocket fins. And if you've seen any of my other videos, then you'll, you'll notice that I'm using the same technique here, um, where I'm going to make a tacky layer first and then reattach the fins. Okay, so I'm going to do this <clears throat> excuse me, by simply putting a bead of glue on the fin. And we don't want this very heavy. This is a, something that is counterintuitive. But for the initial bonding of the fin, it's actually better to have a thin layer of glue that will dry quickly rather than a really thick one. We'll strengthen it later on when we apply the fillets. Okay. 
All right, and note we have not glued this ring at all at this point. All right, so that allows us to readjust it as we're going along. Okay, so I'm going to just apply this fin and I'm using the rest of my line here, which is why I extended it up so far. Okay, and I'm going to pull this back off. And this gives me a layer of glue that I can allow to get tacky here for about 30 to 60 seconds. Okay, now that my glue is got a little bit tacky, I'll come back and reattach the fin. Okay, and here making sure that First of all, I'm aligned at the notch there, so that little notch should be right here, and then the, the fin should extend all the way down to the edge of the motor mount tube there. All right, and we're just going to make sure that everything is in place. All right, and that little ring really wants to just move all over the place, so be careful with it. Okay, and then once you've got this set in place, go ahead and let it dry completely before going on to the next fin. While my fins are drying, I can start in on at least one of the launch lugs. And within the little bag of small pieces here, um, go ahead and pull out the two launch lugs. And then there are two two inch long and about an eighth inch wide pieces here. These are the launch lug standoffs. We'll need those as well. The rest of the pieces can go back in the bag for now. Okay, so for the first launch lug, which will actually be the forward launch lug, we're going to take one of these pieces and just put a nice thin film of glue on this. just enough and then we're going to take the launch lug itself and glue it on there and I'm going to do something here um, and take a little bit of my sandpaper and just go ahead and roughen up the glassine surface on the launch lug that will help it stick better okay and now I'm going to take the sanded surface and put that right up against the glue. Okay, and then just make sure it's all straight. All right, and then I'm just going to let that dry. Now for the other launch lug, the aft launch lug, that needs to be trimmed to fit against the ring um, that's part of the fin assembly there. So I'm going to come back later after my fins have completely dried to do that part. 